I want to talk to you guys about some of the tools that we have for generosity. If we can get everybody back in here. That's the danger of Sunday afternoon. Okay, in your hands, uh, can you hold this generational guide up, please? We are not going to go through all of this, but let me share with you a little bit about what we, these tools for generosity here. Uh, normally this talk, in fact always this talk, is given by a planned giving consultant from GA Repl. Uh, I am not a planned giving consultant, nor do I play one on TV, so I'm not, uh, don't, I, so don't ask me any questions, okay? So, because I won't probably be able to answer them in greater detail. Some of you may know this way better than I do. So I'm only a pastor that knows how to talk, and I'm going to try to fake my way through this, but I'm just putting that disclaimer right there. So normally we work with a company called GA Repl. GA Repl is sort of the Merrill Lynch of Christian brokers and financial dealers. They are financial planners. I have known Glenn Repl, the founder of GA Repl, for 14 years. He and I have served on a board together. I feel so confident with this company that I can bring them to you. Now, one of the things that they are doing is they are offering everyone in this church a free analysis of where you're at from a financial standpoint and where you can go, okay? And I'm gonna talk about some of the tools, whether you are younger, a millennial, or whether you are older, we're gonna try to give you some things here. GA Repl, here's a map of where they're located, some of their locations that are out there. Uh, so they're all over the United States. Now, when we start talking about estate planning, here's a little slide that when I say estate planning t seminar, this is what some of you think about, the upcoming death seminar, uh, because our subconscious tends to pick that up. And yes, there are some things that you can do uh, to leave a legacy long past your being here today. It's important that we are good stewards of the resources that have been entrusted to us and I have been learning this along the way because I also have been blessed with a little bit of wealth and want to make sure that it is stewarded well because it does not belong to me, it belongs to the Lord. So I stand up here really and speak more from a perspective of somebody who's also going through this process. Now just so that you know this, from 2005 to 2059, $59 trillion is being ready to be passed from one generation to the next generation and it is the largest wealth transfer that has ever happened in America. Because today, guess who has all the money right now? We are known as baby boomers. And we are getting ready to pass it to a new group of people that know how to spend it. <laughs> yeah, I heard yes. And you're going to hear about that here in just a few minutes. So I want you to know that a great wealth transfer is happening. But we need to be smart in the process of planning. So a legacy plan provides a roadmap for a successful journey achieving after lifetime gifts for those who are passionate about your organization. If you properly plan today and the church gets behind it and you do a, a new building here, if properly planned for, you could pay it off in the next five to 10 years, if properly planned for. Uh, did you know today that the colleges and universities and hospitals are calling those of us who are baby boomers and they are trying to set much of this up? And what's happened today is we started seeing a lot of wealth leave the church and start going towards secular colleges and universities and even Christian colleges and universities and hospitals. And we said we need to start keeping much of it within God's ranks within the local church. Now, how many of you believe that Bill Gates and Warren Buffett just set up their foundations and they're giving all their wealth away just simply because they're good people? If you think that, you've got another thing coming. And, and the reason is I believe they are good people. But I also believe that they have good attorneys and good CPAs around them who have helped them to avoid taxes. Would you agree with me? And that a lot of what they are doing is for their own personal gain as well. So yes, it's helping America, and I'm not disparaging anything that they're doing there. I'm very thankful for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They do a lot of good work. But Bill did not just set that foundation up so that it would help America. Bill also set that foundation up so that it would help his personal family and his personal net worth. And, and so it's important that we plan. Uh, Benjamin Franklin said this, failure to plan is like planning to fail. Did you also know that what you don't know will hurt you? And so what we want to do is help you understand some of the things that are out there. We're not going to be able to cover everything that's out there, but there are approximately eight main tools that you can use and 20 that are beyond that. 
So there is absolutely no way we could cover these at all in this particular time frame. We are going to do another seminar here uh, that's coming up in another few months. I don't know exactly when it's going to come up, but it's going to be Senior Money Matters. So for those of you who are over 50, we're going to bring back the, the experts on this, and they're going to share with you some Senior Money Matters uh, to really help you out. This is not about getting you to give to the church. This is about you being a good disciple with the things that have been entrusted to you and you hearing God's voice and making sure that you're following where God leads you. So we want to maintain, uh, why now? Uh, we want to maintain a vibrant Christian community. Uh, we want to secure the future for the next generation, which you're going to hear about in just a few minutes. Um, a couple of other things here. What motivates legacy giving? There's different motivations that are here uh, within this room, but uh, commitment to our faith, a desire to live up to us by the values instilled by parents and grandparents, to give back, to make a difference. I mean, there's all sorts of things that motivate us. Today, the Lord has blessed my wife and I with a fairly sizable net worth, and I'm very thankful for that. But I've also told my daughter that it is not going to her, not all of it. I have a responsibility to take care of her, but I don't want all of it going to her. By the way, did you know that you can spoil your children by passing way too much on? Uh, and so you, you think you might be helping them, and in reality, you're actually hurting them. And I realized quite a while ago that it's not mine to give anyway. God does tell me that I'm to take care of my family, but it doesn't mean that I'm to give it all away. As a proper steward of the Lord, I need to make sure that I'm stewarding those things that have been entrusted to me well. And uh, I can tell you this, that there have been people that have paved the way for you here in this church, and it's now our turn to pave the way for another generation. So there's some tools out there that you could disinherit the government from your estate, um, that you could avoid probate. Has anybody here ever been through probate? Can I see your hands? If you've been through probate and settled in an estate. How many of you know what probate is? Can I see your hands? How many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? Okay. Probate is, uh, is, probate is something that happens after you pass away and you have a house or a car or you have assets. And if you have a will you are guaranteed to go through probate. And probate means that the government will s determine how your assets will be distributed. And it is very costly. It is very, uh, you, you, you generally have to get attorneys involved. And I thought because I had a will, I avoided probate till I started going to these seminars and realized that my will actually forces me to go into probate and it could, be, it could take my family eight to 10 months or longer to settle my estate and it can be very costly, anywhere from 2.7% of the estate and upwards. So we wanna make sure that we avoid that for our families and not put our families through the pain of probate, okay? Now, whether you're younger or older, for those of you who are older, you probably understand a little bit more what I'm talking about, but even younger, you wanna make sure that you understand this stuff because I promise you this, one day you will also be older. <laughs> And so you want to go through it now. And I was very thankful that when I was younger in my 20s that I uh, got life insurance policies on myself. Thankfully, they've never come. Uh, but uh, I did put that to make sure that if something were to happen to me that my family would have been taken care of. It's important that we steward our families and take care of our families well. But we can't avoid pr uh, probate. We can leave an inheritance to our family, our church, a legacy to our ch uh, church. And did you know that not all inheritance is good? Did you know that if you pass on an IRA to your children, that they also have the tax implications to that? I didn't know that. And so often we think we're giving our children something good, and the reality is we left them with a bunch of taxes to pay. Well, we, that might not be a bad thing, given that my daughter's 21 years old. <laughs> But we want to make sure that we are being good stewards of the things that are entrusted to us. Now, there are three places that your assets can go to. So three places that your assets can go to. When you pass away, uh, your assets can go to your family, they can go to the government, or they can go to a charity, your church or charity. You get to choose two, two roads. If you can choose two, which two will you choose? <laughs> the government, okay, I heard this. That's, did you know that some of you, by definition, will be passing your assets off to the government? Let me just give you an, ex uh, an example. How many of you have IRAs here, or retirement funds? Anybody here have an IRA? Uh, let me ask you a question. The value of your IRA, is that the real value of your IRA? When, when, you, when you get your statement, is that the value of your IRA? You know, why isn't that the value of your IRA? 
Someone help me out. Well, because what? The, the, because the government has a receivable on your IRA. It's, depending on what tax bracket you're in, it could be upwards to 30, 35%. Or, you know. So they have a receivable on that. And, and by the way, when you're 71, you have to take something out. It's called a, you have to take a distribution out, whether you need the money or not. Why? Because the federal government says we want our money. And so you're required to take that out. And if you pass that off to your children, you pass that tax right off to your children. So you may think you're giving them a $100,000 IRA when you pass away. No, you're not giving them a $100,000 IRA. You're giving them 100,000 less 30%. So what we're trying to say is how about we get smart with this and utilize the tools that are available to us and why don't we disinherit the IRS? Because a whole lot of wealthy people out there are doing that. Why don't we do that in the church? Why don't we finally get smart with the things that are taken, you know, that God has given us and be able to utilize these things to advance the kingdom? So again, I'm acting really smart, but I've been through this talk so many times that I'm just gonna go through some of the tools with you. So here's one of the things that you could do. One of the things that you could do is you could set up what is known as a gift annuity. Everybody say gift annuity. A gift annuity. All a gift annuity is is sort of a container. And you can set that container up and you can pass property or cash into that. And, and here's the interesting thing. When you set up a gift annuity, it is tax free, okay? We had a lady who was uh, at one of our capital campaigns and she had a property that was worth $100,000 and she wanted to sell it. But she had bought this piece of property 30 years ago, and she bought it for like $10,000, and today it was worth $100,000. Please tell me the problem that she has when she buys a piece of property for $10,000, and today it's worth $100,000, and she wants to sell it. What's the problem that she has? Somebody in here tell me. It's called capital gains. The other problem is she was older, and now the real estate taxes were more than her income. So she was forced to sell it because she couldn't pay the taxes any longer on the real estate, the property taxes. So she went to one of our financial advisors and she said, I don't know what to do. And the financial advisor set up a gift annuity to her for $100,000. And because they set that up for her, she received a $26,000 tax donation that year from the federal government. And she got a guaranteed income for the rest of her life, no matter how long she lived, for $5,100 a year. So if she lived to 140, she would still get $5,100. Now, the reason she got the tax deduction is because when she passes away, the gift annuity will pass down to a nonprofit, which in this case was her church. So she was able to put the property here, pay no taxes, no capital gains on it, get a $26,000 tax deduction, get a $5,100 income for life, and upon her death, the $100,000 was passed down to the church. They can then sell the property and there was no tax implications because it's now in a gift annuity. So, you know, amazing. I didn't know stuff like that existed. So that's just one form, a one tool. And, and again, I, I'll just kind of run through these. You can also do what is known as an unbundled gift annuity, but that has to be cash, and it flows the same way. However, the only difference with this is it's the same as the other, but this time the church doesn't have to wait for you to pass away. They get an immediate $26,000 today. So, I mean, that's just another tool that's out there. Same tool, but they get $26,000 today. So a lot of times when I was going through these tools, I thought to myself, man, these have to be too good to be true. And then I realized that this has been out there a long time and people have been using these tools for years and years and years. Uh, it's, it's sort of like having a cow in the barn. You know, you can have a cow in the barn that produces milk. And you know what a lot of people do? They eat the cow. <laughs> and, and what we're trying to say is why don't we let that which God has allowed us over the years that we built to produce more milk to advance his kingdom and yet still take care of us at the same time. So I wanna move through another tool here with you which is pretty cool, uh, and this is how to avoid capital gains. If you have a business or you have real estate or you have stock, highly appreciated stock, 
uh, you're, you're going to want to know this. So we had a lady that had uh, some highly appreciated stock. She came to us in a capital campaign and said, I have this stock, and my son got it for me a long time ago, and I really don't know what it is, but it has an apple on it. And we discovered that she had a lot of Apple stock. The problem was she didn't even know what she had and didn't even care that she had it. But the problem is if she were to sell that Apple stock to give the money to the church, do you know what would have happened? She would have had to pay capital gains and it was worth a lot of money. So instead what she did is she donated it to the church. The church is in a tax exempt status. They sold it and then they gave her a guaranteed income for the rest of her life. So that was another way in which you could do that. So here's a way that you could take, say, $100,000 worth of stock. Uh, you can diversify it. You can pay no taxes or income tax on it. And uh, you can avoid all capital gains. You can disinherit the IRS. You can still give the full value to your heirs. And you can get a tax deduction. And I, when I heard this, I said, there's got to be something wrong with this. But it really isn't that complicated. And hopefully I'm not making it complicated because I'm not the financial guy. The financial guys really make it complicated. So, <laughs> so let's just take a million dollars just for easy math. And let's say that you have a million dollars. Your business is worth a million. My hotels are worth a million or something along those lines. I want to sell that. So what I can do is I can put together a tax-exempt trust and I can transfer that into a tax-exempt trust. And then within that trust, I can sell my business and because it's tax-exempt, I don't have to pay any capital gains. I can also transfer stock into that as well. No capital gains on that. Now, if I don't do that and I take the million dollars and I sell that stock or sell my hotel, then all of a sudden I'm gonna have to pay about $200,000 in taxes, which means I'm only gonna have $800,000. Does that make sense, everybody follow me? And if I invest that $800,000 at 5%, I'm gonna make $40,000 a year. It's not bad. Now, we used to have to pay something called estate tax, and depending on where your estate's at, you still may have that, but not on a million dollars. So really, I took a million dollars, and now it's only worth 800. But if I transfer it into a tax-exempt trust over here, what happens is this, now at 5%, I get $50,000 for the rest of my life. Which is better, 40,000 or 50,000? Well, I'd rather make 40, uh, 50,000, excuse me. I'd rather make 50,000. So now I'm making 50,000, and then upon my death, it, it passes to my favorite church or charity. Now, because I put it into a tax-exempt tr trust, I get a $300,000 tax deduction that year. Now, $300,000 is about how much money, well, I'll tell you, it, it's approximately $100,000 of cash in my pocket because I got a tax deduction for $300,000. That means I got about $100,000 if I'm in a 30% tax bracket. I know that sounds confusing, but just trust me, I got about $100,000 more money. So I put it into the tax-exempt trust. I get $100,000, uh, or I get $300,000 in tax savings, which equates to $100,000. Now, there's only one problem with this for me, is my daughter would not be happy with this. Because what did I just do? I just, through this, I, I, I blessed the church, I blessed a nonprofit, but I disinherited my daughter. But what can I buy with $100,000? Remember, the federal government just gave me $100,000. I got a $300,000 tax deduction. What can I buy with $100,000 that I could leave to my daughter? Somebody help me out. It's called life insurance, okay? So I could get a policy, and depending on how old I am, uh, I could use that $100,000 to what is known as a life insurance, and I can do what is known as a wealth creation trust with that. Uh, I can get a $1 million policy on myself, which I have on myself, and then when I pass away, that goes to my daughter, and how much tax is uh, needing to be paid on life insurance? Does anybody know? Zero. So what did I just do? I took $1 million, and I turned it into... Two million dollars. I gave a million dollars to my church and I gave a million dollars to my daughter. And to me, that sounds like Matthew chapter 25. It's taking something that God, and, and it's done all the time. Attorneys here, right here in Dallas, know how to put these together. Uh, these are done all the time. Um, so here's what the current plan looked like. I, I would have had a total tax of eight, well, it was going to be 800. No, my heirs would have gotten $800,000. I would have had tax of $520,000. I would have had income of 40. Under the charitable plan, uh, I would increase my income to 50,000. I'd give a million dollars to my daughter, and I'd give a million dollars to 
the, the church. Man, why not? I mean, so, so often what you don't know does hurt you. Uh, another thing, did you know we have had several churches that people have their houses paid for and they say, you know what, um, I, I'm, I just want to donate my house to the church. Now again, if you sell the home, you, you may have to pay capital gains. You may not, but you may have to pay capital gains depending on uh, what state you're in. So, you, but one of the things that you can do here is you can deed your house to your church or your favorite charity. You can still live in it uh, for the rest of your life. You can pay all the maintenance and the insurances. But here's the thing. If your house is worth 500000 or 400000 it doesn't matter what it is. If you donate that to your favorite church or charity, you immediately get a tax deduction in that year of $250,000. I mean, if you're gonna donate it anyway, why donate it when you pass away and then can't use the tax deduction? If you're gonna give it anyway, give it now and take the tax deduction so you don't have to keep paying taxes. So that's just one tool that you can use, okay? Another tool. Uh, Did you know that you could make a commitment uh, over five years and take the whole commitment the year that you make it? Normally what happens is if I wanna give the church $10,000 a year, I can only take that off in my taxes in the year that I make it. Now, this could be helpful for you. We had a lady who uh, took early retirement, and when she took early retirement, the company gave her three years of salary. So they gave her three years of salary in one year, and then the following year, she was gonna go on retirement, and her income was gonna drop to almost nothing. What's the problem when you get three years of salary in one year, and you never had that before? It's called Taxes, you're gonna have to pay taxes. That that threw into a whole new tax bracket. And she didn't know what to do, and so GA Repl set up a form in which she could do what is known as a commitment giving trust. And here's how a commitment giving trust works, is she put put $100,000 into a commitment giving trust, it generated an interest, it generated an, uh, it generated interest, and it generated $10,000 a year, which she passed off to the church, but because she put it in a commitment giving trust, she got a $47,000 tax deduction that year. So, and when the five years was up, she got the money back. So she was able to give it over five years, and then when five years was up, she got it all back. Why wouldn't we do something like that if it's possible to do? Now, again, this doesn't fit everybody because everybody is in different places. So, you know, maybe the house doesn't relate to you. Um, We talked about having a will. A will does cause you to go through probate. And here's just some of the, uh, the, the typical probate costs are court fees, attorney fees, accounting fees, appraisal fees, fees pays to uh, state ex- uh, executors. Uh, it's usually about 2.7%. Uh, it can take six to nine months. I did not realize as my assets had grown that you know, now I have hotels, I have a house, I have, you know, I have a substantial amount of assets that when my wife and I were to pass away, my daughter would have to go through probate. We live in Montana, it's still expensive to go through probate in Montana, but I didn't want to put my family through that. So I'm now in the process of setting up what is known as a trust, and uh, I'll show you. It's a lot better not to use a will to transfer your assets, but to use a trust, because a trust, you designate a uh, trustee, and they can just execute your wishes and pass it right through with no attorneys or any of those sorts of things. So all a trust is is really a bucket. It's just a bucket that you put all your stuff. And you can do, uh, you can do revocable trusts or irrevocable trusts. And I am doing a, a revocable trust. So I'm putting my assets in that. So how can you give 100% of your estate to your children and 100% to charity? And this is exactly what I'm doing right now. I am setting up a living trust. And let's say that my living trust is worth $800,000 or it can be $400,000. And by the way, it doesn't take long to get to $800,000. Your house, you know, your stuff can really add up to $800,000 fairly quickly. So we might not think that we have $800,000, but again, the value of this stuff can be there. So all of a sudden, if I have a living trust, when I pass away, that goes to my wife. Now, when my wife passes away in this living trust, Uh, We're going to pass it down into a CRT. We're going to invest it over 20 years uh, so there will be a 5% income to the children. And so if I have two children, each child will get $400,000 over 20 years. So I've given the $800,000 to them over uh, 20 years at $400,000. 
after the 20 years is over, it will pass down to my church or charity, and I did receive a tax deduction for that. So the children got $800,000, and the church got $800,000. Everybody follow that? So, okay, you didn't follow that, yeah. So anyway, it's just a living trust. It's just a bucket that drops down that the church gets after 20 years, and essentially it's like a savings account. You've invested it, and it is producing a, a return on the investment of that $800,000. And so your will says, or your trust says, we're gonna pass it off to the kids over 20 years. Pretty simple. Uh, you pass it to both the kids? Okay, because what happens is right here, it's, it can't pass to the church till after 20 years. So the 5% the return on 20 years is $800,000. That's how, bec because you're investing it at 5%. It's like a savings account, but it's, yeah. That's the, that's the layman's terms, but it's, it's like a savings account. So here's another way you can do it. Same sort of thing, you're passing it this direction, but the other thing you can do with the tax savings that you have is you can buy another insurance trust for $800,000, which is what I'm doing. So I'm buying uh, life insurance for myself, and I'm gonna name my children as the beneficiary, so all of a sudden when I pass away, the same thing happens. The kids are gonna each get $400,000 over 20 years, but they're also gonna get a lump sum tax free of $800,000, and the church is gonna get $800,000. I've taken $800,000, and I've tripled it. Yeah, oh, anybody have a question? I thought you had a question. Uh, that's over 20 years, 20 years, okay. Uh, so, that's just, that's just one way in which you can do that. Now let's talk about your IRAs, your IRAs. Uh, here's the same thing you can do with your IRAs. Sometimes it's better to give your IRAs or your retirement rather than cash, and you can set the same thing up. You can put a million dollars of IRA. When you pass away, it goes to your spouse. When your, pass, uh, when your spouse passes away, it goes directly to the church. So immediately they get it upon the death of both. With that, you also get a tax savings of $300,000. With that, you can buy a life insurance. Then you can pass it off to your kids right there. And so what you've done is you've taken your IRA and you've given it away twice. Okay, so that's, it's just the same tool, just a little bit variation. And then you can do the exact same thing with your IRA and you can make it go three times by again putting it into a 20 year trust. The other one, the church gets it right away. This one, they're gonna have to wait 20 years. But again, you just have to, it has to be the right thing for you. So I've covered several tools and I'm not gonna cover any more. So here's what, because some of you are like, how many of you are like, I am so bored right now. <laughs> it's, it's okay, I get it. So here's the thing, some of you say, hey, this may mean something to me. Did you know that some of the things that you're invested in, some of your stocks or your IRAs or some of those kinds of things, did you know that they may be invested in things that you do not agree with? They could be, you could be invested in Philip Morris, which supports values that we as Christians do not believe in. So what will happen is GA Repl, in a few days, they're gonna come through and we're gonna start passing around a sign-up sheet. If you would like to meet with a financial planner, there is no cost to you whatsoever. You can sit down and meet with them and ask them questions. What could I do? What are some of my options? Those sorts of things. And they will help guide you through your particular scenario. They will also do a moral uh, compass to see what you are invested in and tell you, hey, that particular stock supports abortion or this supports pornography. You do not want to be putting God's money in pornography and abortion, okay? So what you wanna make sure is that you are invested in socially conscious stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You wanna make sure that those are all, uh, that those have all been scrubbed and we, or GA REPL has a system to be able to tell you what you're invested in because all we're trying to do is give you tools and knowledge. So this sign-up sheet's gonna come around. Uh, I think there's two appointments left because Friday night got it and Saturday, or yeah, Friday night and Saturday got it. But if you would like an appointment with him and there's no more time slots, just write your name, email, and telephone down and their office will contact you and he's gonna be here over a three or four day period in two weeks. He's coming up. Next Monday and Tuesday. Next Monday and, and Tuesday. The, the waiting list, he's going to be coming back. He hasn't scheduled them. Okay. So if I've totally screwed it up and got you confused, sit down with him and say, man, Eric just totally has me confused, and he will straighten you out, okay? 